Good afternoon, everybody. Um, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, amazing uh, webinar with these incredible presenters. Um, I know Julie and her husband, and that was really great uh, being able to, to listen to her before um, I came on. Um, today, I teach about a lot of things, but today I kind of wanted to teach something uh, pretty simplistic because I wasn't quite sure about the audience coming in. Are they brand new traders? You know, is there anybody here that's like really brand new? They've never done a trade. Are there people that don't know about candlesticks, Japanese candles? Right. I had a girlfriend today, my girlfriend Shannon. Um, I, I was doing a crypto. I trade crypto as well, and I put out this. Uh, new crypto class and she sends me a message she goes you know I'm, I'm gonna get your crypto class and I was like but wait a second you don't even know how to trade yet <laughs> like you should not start trading with crypto you really need to start simple and work your way up I said do you even know Japanese candles and she said no and I said that's when I decided honestly you guys I had a whole PowerPoint planned for today and I changed it because I said you know what I don't want to be too complicated and I want to teach you guys something that anybody can come today and learn something. So I decided I was going to go with Japanese candles in the dark pool. I'm going to be sharing with you uh, trades that I've taken this week, trades that I'm in right now. Um, so you can kind of follow along with them afterwards. So I know um, many of you probably don't know about candles. Well, they don't really have that great of a success rate. To be honest, by themselves, they're like 60%. Some are a little bit better. They're like 70%. And, and then what that really means is like 30 to 40% of the time, your trade's gonna fail if you just followed candlesticks. And I don't know about you guys, but I need a much higher success rate. So today, I'm gonna be teaching you how to use candles and the dark pool to achieve a 90% success rate. I think everybody likes that, right? Yeah, so um, you're probably wondering like, how did I get here? I'm not going to do a long bio. I know a lot of you probably know about me, but I did start out in the best place in the entire world. Okay, I started in, uh, I think the year was, yeah, 1994, a very long time ago. I got really lucky. Honestly, I went to college uh, and I majored in psychology. I love psychology, and there's so much psychology in the market. Um, but I didn't want to be a, a psychologist. Actually, I'll be honest, I couldn't afford to go back and get a master's. I was um, on my own, and I had a lot of student loans, and so I got really lucky. I landed this job as an assistant to one of the best traders at Schoenfeld Securities in New York on Long Island. There were two offices, one in Manhattan, one on Long Island. There's actually the map of it. Here is the building with all those windows. And I got hired as Scotty's assistant and I was in the million dollar room at the largest prop firm in New York. I mean, these guys made a lot of money and I didn't know anything about the market. I just got lucky being at the right place at the right time and I got hired. But it even gets better than that. They sat me in front of this computer called an Instanet machine. An Instanet machine, probably most, nobody knows about this. What this machine had is dark pool liquidity. And it was very expensive at the time, like thousands of dollars a month and only the very profitable rooms had it. And the reason they were profitable, honestly, is because they had the Instanet machine. And what this is, is this is where all the big guys do their trades. Goldman Sachs, Barclays, JP Morgan, the guys that have billions of dollars, they were hiding their trades on this instant computer. And it was my job to tell my table what was going on. So for example, Scotty would say, hey Steph, you know, can you buy me some Microsoft? And I would look on the internet machine and if I saw there was a huge seller, I'd go, uh-uh, Scotty, you don't wanna buy it, there's a big seller. And this is, this is what I did every day. This is how I learned how to trade. Eventually, a couple of years later, Scotty left, went to Florida. The firm gave me um, a lot of money to trade. I did extremely well. And that was really how I got started in this business. And I've been on tour for, for years with The Money Show, with Larry Berman across Canada, teaching hundreds of thousands of people how to trade around the dark pool. So today, I'm going to be teaching you about that in a minute. But let's just talk about... Japanese candles, okay? 
This guy, probably nobody knows much about him, but he was the father of Japanese candles. Munahisa Hama. In fact, I think we, we need some music for this. Little Japanese music. <laughs> I wrote that, by the way. I write music on the side. But yeah, this guy was actually a legendary rice trader. That is what he was using to trade and, and form these candles. His, um, he was from the town of Sakata. He developed these innovative technique of charting price movements. That's really what candles do. They, they chart price movements. And he did really well. You know, this is back in like 1850. And his personal fortune amassed over $10 billion if it was measured in today's dollars. So his original ideas have been modified and they've been refined. And I gotta say, I love candles, but I love combining them with volume, especially dark pool. So here's, here's the candles I'm talking about. So we have these two candles. One is green, one is red. What do they mean? What's the difference between them? Well, the green candle is bullish and the red candle is bearish. So you have the body of the candle in green. We'll just take this one first. It opens lower and the top of the body is where it closes. So just looking at that candle, you can tell where it opened and where it closed. And I love visual things. This is why I love candles. And the bottom tail, or yeah, most people call it a tail. Some people call it a lower shadow. That's the low of the day. So you can see immediately where it opened, where it closed, low of the day, and the wick on top is the high of the day. Now, whenever we see wicks on top as a overnight swing trader, I will not go long and buy a stock if there's a big wick at the top on the daily candle. It means it did not close near the high. And that was, I'm gonna tell you, the first rule that Scotty, my, my boss back in the day, taught me. Yeah, and we weren't even looking at charts back then. We looked at the high of the day and where it closed. And if it was too far away, we didn't take it because sellers came in at the end of the day. And the same goes for going short. If there's a big wick at the bottom, it means buyers came in and bought it up and we wouldn't go short if it didn't close weak. Right, pretty simple. The red candle, it opens higher, but it closes lower. And here's the low of the day. And here's the high of the day. So I'm gonna take you through just a couple of quick charts. So here's a one minute chart. So on a one minute chart, every one minute bar here represents, uh, it's one candle. Yeah, each candle represents one minute of time. On a five minute chart, right, each five minute candle represents five minutes of time. Now, as a day trader, these are amazing. Yes, we can, we can see so much in these candles uh, from a day trading standpoint. For example, I mostly use five minute charts, but if you're trading Tesla, you wanna look at a one minute chart. You wanna see the volume coming in and you wanna see the candles as well. But if I'm trading Bank of America, like this candle, I'll use the five minute chart. Um, now we have a daily chart. Each candle represents one day. And we have a weekly chart, which each candle represents a week. Now, if you're a longer term trader, long term swinger, maybe a week, two weeks, a month, a couple months, these charts, the daily and the weekly, are gonna be your best friend. You wanna see the overall longer trend when you're holding on to something a bit longer. But, but I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, which not too many people know about, and I'm happy to share it with you guys today, is that as a day trader, I map out day trades for a lot of people every day, <clears throat> I look at the daily chart first in the morning. First thing I come in and I look at the daily chart to decide if I am going to map out a day trade. That is my biggest secret. I can't tell you how many people have said to me over the years, Steph, I never thought to do that. And it makes sense because think of it this way. If the long-term gravitational push is, is strong and bullish, right, on the weekly chart and the daily chart, well, guess what? 
your little day trade is going to have a higher success rate of working out because you're going with the trend. And if it's bearish, your day trade is going to have a better chance of working out on the short side if the overall trend is to the downside. Now, I have not put any moving averages on these charts, but I do use specific moving averages to map out my trades. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that in, in just a couple minutes. But let's, uh, let's talk about the dark pool. Now that we've got the candles down. Yeah, let's talk about the really good stuff. Yeah, the dark pool. What is the dark pool? Well, it's, it's really not as ominous as it sounds. It's just an alternative exchange where the big guys do all their trades. That's it. It's an, it's an outside market where these guys kind of get together. It used to be called the upstairs room back in the day. I mean, it's been around forever, but now it's just an alternative exchange. There's 40 of them, by the way, where all these guys do their trades. It's hidden away from the market until they're finished with their trade. For example, if they want to buy 6 million shares of Microsoft, we are not going to see one single share until they're done with their entire order. So what does that do for them? A lot. Okay, I'll tell you what it does for them. Nobody sees it coming, right? They don't see that Goldman Sachs wants to, you know, buy 6 million shares or sell 6 million shares until they're, it's done. If we saw that, guess what? If we saw that they had this big order, we would follow them, right? Wouldn't you just follow the biggest guy in the stock market if you could see his hand? And this is why I shed light on the dark pool. Because when these guys are buying, the market goes up. When these guys are selling, it goes down. I have not watched television in years, you guys. I don't care what they're saying on TV. I'll tell you what happened. A couple of years ago, I had on CNBC and... Every time I saw the dark pool buying, they were saying sell, sell, sell. And every time I saw the dark pool selling, they would say buy, buy, buy. And I said, are you kidding me? This is, this is awful. Yes, they are leading people to the slaughterhouse, little retail traders. They need a sucker on the other side of the trade. So I turned it off. And yeah, my trading has never been better. So a couple of years ago, I was asked to write this book, Dark Pool Secrets. I should have called it the stock market disruptor. Yeah, I pretty much call out Wall Street in a really big way. I have proof, evidence, the market is rigged, it's manipulated, but we can still profit off of it. That's, that's really the best part about it. I mean, a lot of people have said to me, hey Steph, you know, have you ever thought about going to the SEC and telling them what you know? Seriously, do I? I don't want to get killed, okay? <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. I'm not going to tell on these people. And trust me, there's stuff I have seen that I wish I didn't. I mean, I have seen, and I put it in my book, um, I have seen major trades. I call them prints. Every, every trade is uh, printed in your time and sales window. So I call them prints. I have seen these major prints on fear, the VXX, TVIX, um, a day before massive terror attacks. Yep, I didn't know what it was because, again, I didn't know we were going to have a major terror attack. And um, I posted it on Twitter. What is this? I've never seen this before with, with a picture of it, everything. And normally we see prints on fear before a correction. But I always see a correction coming every time because there's a pattern. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But we didn't have that. Yet we were having these big trades on fear. And I was like, I don't know what this is. This is crazy. And I just bought some puts because I didn't know what was going on. And then there was this massive terror attack. Now, and I'll be honest, when I was writing this book, my publishers actually asked me, my marketing team, they said, Steph, like, do we have to put this in here? Like, don't you think we can just skip it? And guess what I told them? I said, let me tell you something. If you don't put this in the book, I'm not writing the book. Because people need to know, okay, that this stuff happens. Somebody knew about this attack. And to put these, we're talking 10 million print trades, okay? We're talking billions of dollars, has to go through a bank. Somebody saw this coming and they didn't say anything. 
but I'm not going to pick up the phone and tell the SEC. <laughs> I, I'm going to put on, I'm going to warn my followers to put on protection. Something's happening. I don't know what it is. And I'm going to tell you that was, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So I have a lot of really good stuff in this book. All my trades are in there, uh, but I'm going to give you a little taste of it today. So people thought that I was psychic for a very long time. I would call things every day for years. And I'm, I'm just a little bit psychic. Now, honestly, my crystal ball is the dark pool. I have on record a 90% documented success rate on my whisper of the day recommendations. I'm gonna show you that at the end. I've called the last 18 out of 18 corrections on social media and live trading rooms before they've happened. And I've spotted insider trading. I did in my book, I show you Wells Fargo, massive trades before that fraudulent bank account stuff came out years ago. And of course, trades on fear before a major terrorist attack. So a big question people ask me is, all right, Steph, we see this one big trade in the dark pool this big block, right? Because they, they don't show us the trade until they're done, so it's one big block. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a minute. But who's on the other side, Steph? Yeah, if there's somebody buying, isn't there somebody selling, right? I can't tell you. If I had a nickel for everybody that's asked me that question over 26 years, I would be very rich. Well, let me tell you, we have Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and Barclays. These are the biggest players and they win no matter what because they have the most money. So if they're buying, we go up. If they're selling, you know, Charles Payne, uh, you guys probably have heard of him. He's on Fox. He wrote a book also and my marketing team also represented him. And you know what they told me? They go, Steph, you'll never believe what Charles told us. I said, what? What did he tell you? The hardest part of his job is finding a news story to go along with the market. That's literally what they do all day long, you guys, everybody on TV, something, market moved up, <gasps> let's find out why, right? Let's find out why the market moved up. Let's, let's find an analyst, a bullish analyst to come on, come on, bring one on fast so he can explain why the market went up in the last five minutes. Yeah, and if it goes down, they bring on a bearish one. Tell everybody, why is the market down? Oh my gosh, five minutes, it's been going down, why? There's no rational, rationalization to the stock market, okay? It's all numbers. It's algos trading off of levels and it's these big guys buying and we go up, these big guys selling and we go down. They'll come up with something, don't worry about the reason. Wall Street, Main Street, two different streets. But here's the deal, these guys need a sucker on the other side of the trade. And my job is to make sure you guys are not the sucker, okay? Because these guys, yeah, that's who's on the other side of their trade. Now, who do you think is gonna win? I'm gonna follow the big guy. And that's what we do. We follow the big guy all day long. And the news comes out later, take, I mean, everything. If I told you how much insider trading stuff I've seen in my career, I had no idea what's going on. I was following the prints. So we have four different kinds of dark pool prints. We have the real time prints. So these are trades that are just executed. And we call them real time because the price of the trade is very close to where the stock is trading right now. So if the print is $162 on GLD and we're trading right there, I'll call it a real time print. And I'm gonna teach you how to trade those in just a minute. All right, but the second one is a late buy print. Yeah, when corrections are over, we get these late buy prints. The price is not today's price, it's yesterday's price, which is actually illegal. Yes, it is, right, you guys? When there's a trade that happens, when somebody does a trade, don't they have to report it the same day they do it? Yeah. The dark pool lets you have three hours 
before they post their trade, once they're done. That's why these big guys love trading in this alternative exchange, because they have all these rules that they they can go by that, that we don't, right? So they're normally three hours late, but I've seen 24 hours late, and I'm gonna show you how they get around that in a second. But we have late sell prints. So they sold yesterday, and they're saying today, oh, by the way, we sold a billion dollars or five billion dollars yesterday ha 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 i know we're down now but yeah we didn't have to tell you yesterday mm -hmm. i'm going to show you that in a minute and then we have market on close these are the big block trades at four o'clock that are just going crazy at the end of the day i'm sure you guys have seen that yeah we don't pay attention to those at all that's just institutions that need to cover their shorts at the end of the day or sell their longs so that they're flat overnight it does not give us a bias opinion on the trade it's flattening them out you see sell imbalances buy imbalances that means nothing it's the trades in the middle of the day that mean the most so let's talk about the real-time dark pool prints. So what these big prints, it's kind of like you have a, a rock and you're throwing it into the lake. Throwing it in, it's going to create a splash. And it actually splashes in the opposite direction of the true intended move. Yeah, the opposite. So if they're buying, they move it down. If they're selling, they move it up first. And this is why I tell my traders not to trade these the day they come out, because you're gonna get splashed. And this has been going on forever, by the way. Back in the day when there were people on the floor of the exchange, here's a specialist with those phones. Yeah, do you know who he's talking to? Goldman Sachs. So here's a scenario. Goldman Sachs calls up this guy, we'll call him Chris. Hey, Chris, I have 1 million shares that I want to buy of GLD at $162.50. Yeah, I want to buy a million at one six. Do it without moving the price up, okay? Yeah, do it without moving. It's, it's the highest I want to pay is $162.50. So Chris goes, says, no problem. I could do that for you. All right, so what does Chris do? Well, usually they send out a little guy into the, uh, into the pit to whisper into a couple people's ears that, hey, Goldman Sachs, he wants to sell gold. I have a rumor, Goldman Sachs is selling, he's selling gold, you know, my cousin told me he's got a brother on the blah, blah. They just make up any story, right? Meanwhile, the crowd starts to sell, 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 sell. And this guy, Chris, is like, oh yeah, bring it on. I'll, I'll. But, he, but he actually has a look of pain on his face, pretending that he doesn't really want to buy it. Oh my gosh, it's going down. I don't really want to, okay, fine. If you're selling, I'll buy it, sure. Right, and all of a sudden, it goes up and that's the splash. And these guys are going, wait a second. Yeah, what happened to that guy, Johnny, that gave us the tip? Where is that little guy, right? Johnny's in the bathroom, he's, he's away. He's out of there, he did his job. He faked out all these guys so they could sell, so this specialist, Chris, could buy it so he could give it to Goldman Sachs. This has been the game forever, you guys. This is it right here. And they're still doing it with computers because there's no people on the floor. So let me show you a live example so you can see what I'm talking about. So recently, February 9th, we got these three, two dark pool prints came in. Three million at 1960, and this is Halliburton and another three million at 1966. And notice they're at 12 o'clock during lunch when they don't think anybody's gonna see these trades, right? Mm -hmm. This is highly unusual, very large dark pool prints. So here's where the, oh, so here is my announcement. I put this out in uh, my trading rooms, okay? Three million prints. I thought one might be canceled because sometimes when I see two of them like that, one is canceled, the condition changes, but they did not cancel them. So six million right here, right there. That's a doji candle, by the way. Yeah, doji is an indecision candle. It opens and closes at the same price. And what I love about this, it's a high volume doji. The volume is all the way to the top. And if we close above the top, it's bullish. If we close below the, the bottom wick, it's bearish in the next couple of days. But I know they're going to splash. So you don't want to get in right away. See how they splashed it down? 
went below 1960. Then, all right, then they brought it up and they did something very common is they retested the prints. Hey guys, you still want to buy it? Yes, yes, yes. And up, up we go. This is a very popular pattern. And if you enter too early, you can get splashed. I still get splashed even though I wait. Yeah, it happens, who cares? You get out, you wanna get in the right direction, okay? It's okay to wake up and find yourself on the wrong side of the trade, but guess what? It's not okay to stay there, right? Because if you stay there, your ego, you're feeding your ego and you're gonna lose all your money. Who can't get over yourself? Not every trade is gonna work out, number one. Number two, if you're on the wrong side, you wanna, remember, you don't ever wanna be on the other side of Goldman Sachs's trade because he's going to crush you. So I tell my traders that all the time. All right, so a lot of people want to peg the top. I'm going to show you some Japanese candles to peg the top. Mm-hmm. Why do people want to peg the top up? Oh, there's an ego thing. You know why? They missed the whole run up, right? I know a lot of people that all of a sudden, can I short it? And I always say, well, did you miss the whole run up? Yes, right? So now I'm gonna peg the top because I missed this whole big trade. Don't do it unless you have a bearish candle like a hanging man and you have the dark pull prints. Yeah, I don't, remember, I don't trade candles by themselves. The success rate's only 60% usually. This one is, um, yeah, it's around 60. Not that great. So what it is is one candle it has a long, it's at the top of a hill. So it looks like they're gonna hang somebody up there, okay? It has a small body, it could be green or it could be red. But remember, it's at the top of a big run up and all of a sudden you have this hanging man candle. Now there's another one that's really good, the evening star. It's a bearish reversal pattern at the top. It's three candles and this actually has a 72% success rate. You have a green candle, then you have a small, like almost bodied or doji candle, and then you have a reversal, a red candle. So it's like it's doing a U-turn on the chart is really what I look at it like. Okay, so these are, these are okay, but we need to see the print. So let me show you an example on GLD. You know, fairly recently, this is a daily chart. So remember, daily charts, stronger charts to trade off of. We had this 840,000 share trade at 11.44, right near lunchtime, at 182.85. And that's big for, for GLD. And you know, when you're doing this for 26 years, you know what's unusual, because we get a lot of trades, a lot of block trades, but you have to really have that experience and know what's unusual and what's not. There's a lot of trades I just ignore, and again, I see specific patterns, and. Um, here's an evening star right there. You have the green candle, the doji, and a U-turn, and we have the dark pool, and you can see how amazing. Yeah, look at that big move down it had with that combination. So here's two more topping patterns. So here's a dark cloud cover. So first you have this green candle. Everything is great, but all of a sudden the clouds are rolling in. It, it actually gaps up, looks great in the morning, but by the afternoon, it, we're gonna have a big storm because it closes weak below 50% of that green candle. And that's why they call it a dark cloud covering over that, that bullish candle. It's gonna rain. Then we have this bearish engulfing pattern, which is two candles, but instead, this one does the same thing, but it engulfs the whole green candle, just takes it over, bearish, selling coming in there. So here's an example. And again, these are all recent examples. We have a, an evening star right there. Okay, then we have, look at that, dark cloud cover. And look at this, bearish engulfing. Three bearish candles on CVS, by the way, and of course, we had the dark pool came in on January 25th, 867,000. That's a really big print for CVS. All right, so let's, um, let's go to the bottom.
Yeah, trying to peg the bottom. How many of you have ever tried to peg the bottom? Well, you can get hurt, right? It's like catching a falling knife. You don't want to do that. So I like to use candles and prints to peg the bottom. Let's talk about an exhaustion candle. Yeah, the sellers get exhausted. They're done. There's no more sellers left. And a lot of times we get a hammer at the bottom. So it's kind of like the hanging man at the top, but now it's at the bottom and it's bullish. It's a bottoming, it's a shakeout candle on high volume, or a lot of times we get an inverted hammer upside down at the bottom of a run. Also very bullish, but of course, you know, we have to have prints on that. So here's one I'm looking at right now. Yeah, right now. Look at Home Depot, the chart. So see this right here? This looks like an exhaustion hammering candle. It's trying to hammer a bottom here. And check out this print. We got this big print on Home Depot, $257, 729,000. That's very big at the bottom on February 26th. So you may wanna watch this as long as it stays above 257.77, I would be bullish on it. So we have some other bottoming candles and here's a bullish piercing line. So it's very similar to the dark cloud cover except it's the opposite where we go lower in the morning but by the afternoon, right, the clouds go away, we close half uh, higher than half of the red candle. It signifies a reversal and a downward trend. We have a bullish engulfing candle. Same thing, we start lower and then it engulfs it. And, and I love these. In fact, here's a recent one and this was on one of my recommendations. Manulife, symbol is MFC. Bullish engulfing right there. Okay, but look at this. Holy cow, six million that is that's really big you guys it doesn't even trade that usually in a day that was on the 19th that came in right there and you can see that it splashed down see at first and then it went up so great great example of how to trade these hopefully you guys are learning something today yep give a shout out if you are yep so did you guys see this correction coming on the nasdaq yeah, just happening right now, actually. We're still in the midst of it. Did you see it? Well, I did because I started to see these late dark pool cell prints coming in. That's right. They were late. They were not from today. And they started getting heavy. And in fact, I'm going to share with you my trades right here. On February 16th, all right, so uh, we have a couple of people that said, nope, they did not see this correction coming. So here on February 16th, do you see this quantity, 205,427? That is the dark pool signature. Actually, it used to be 410,000, 410, or it would start with 411. In fact, that's what I wrote in my book two years ago. And it's crazy, you know, when I wrote the book, I really didn't think too many people were gonna read it. I didn't know how popular it was gonna be, but evidently it got very popular. Um, we sold a lot of copies, and the, these big guys started to change their MO. And again, I've been watching this for 26 years. They all of a sudden cut them in half because they knew I was teaching people to look for 410 and 411. Now, they didn't know that my scanner scans for a lot of different things, and we picked it up right away and said, oh, this is their new trick, and there's a lot more to it, but you can see the price that it was trading. This, this trade is at 366.39, and the market was at 335.62. So this is almost a dollar higher. Yeah, because it didn't occur at that time. Yeah, it happened the day before. We opened up lower, and these trades were coming in all day long. Look at these. So I, we have a, a project that adds them all up. I'm going to show you 
in a minute what that looks like. So I can actually see what it looks like when it gets heavier. And that's how I know a correction is happening when I see it across the entire market, the SPY, the Russell, and the Qs. We did not get any dark pull activity on the Russell yet. Just the SPY and the Qs. So I stuck with trading those. But how is this possible? This is not legal 24 hours later. But I found out years ago, I was at uh, an ETF conference down in Florida and I got invited out to dinner with the big folks at the Bank of Montreal. Yeah, I was with uh, Larry Berman and he's like, hey Steph, you wanna come out to dinner with you know BMO guys? I'm like, yeah, okay. So they, they come and pick me up in this Humvee limo. Okay, this is where I found out the biggest secret I've ever found out in the stock market, you guys, in the back of a Humvee limo. Uh, Larry turns to this one trader and says, tell her, she's dying to know, she's dying to know. And um, I was dying to know because I didn't understand how they could legally get away with this. I always knew that you had to report the trade the day you did it. It could be three hours late, but not 24 hours late. So the, the guy is a floor trader for BMO and he like, kind of whispers and he goes, look, if we do a trade, okay, from our desk in New York to our desk in London across the sea, we don't have to report this trade for 24 hours. It's a loophole. Yeah, because we're, we're crossing it to another country across the water. And it's like we, we don't have to report it. They don't have to write the ticket. They don't have to put it in until 24 hours later. I mean, of course, this makes so much sense. How else would they sell billions of dollars at the top without anybody seeing or buy billions of dollars at the bottom? We're on to them. So we, we keep track of these particular trades. They tell us a lot. I can't share everything with you today, but I'm sharing a lot. So here's what I started to see. This is from our project. So we count them up. So on February 3rd, we only had, um, you know, 800,000. And here's a 410, right? That's the old signature. They, they still do trades with 410, but a lot of times they half them. So 400,000, we had 1.2 million, we had 1 million, we only had 451, 600, 400. Oh, look at that, you guys, do you see the difference? 2.8 million late dark pool sell prints. That got heavy, something is going on, and then another day, heavy prints. So looking at this daily chart, right? I don't know, would you think that, you know, not everybody can see they're selling, right? But we can, and it closed below it at 333.93. So I run a live trading room. I am there all day long. I don't ever leave my seat because I trade all day long. I day trade, swing trade, I trade everything. I'm there at three o'clock in the morning. I live in Las Vegas now. I'm originally from New York, but I'm up at 3 a.m sharing my screen and talking with my traders, mapping out trades. And then as soon as the bell rings, I start trading live and I call all of my trades out live in our alert tab. It makes a cha-ching sound, which is really cool because a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are home working. They don't have time to read a chat and try to search and find my trade. So I made it really easy for them. I put in the alert tab, it makes a cha-ching so that they can look over and go, up. Oh, Stephanie just entered a trade. Because a lot of them follow me into these trades. I've taught them how to trade, but following somebody is very helpful when you're learning. So here's my post on February 17th at 10.21 a.m. I bought QQQ, put debit spread. Many of you may not know what that is. Does anybody here not know what that is? Yeah, go ahead and give a shout out if you don't know what a put debit spread is. It's an options trade. You don't know. Okay, good. I didn't think, I thought that a lot of people wouldn't know. I was, I was originally going to do a whole webinar today on this particular thing, but I said, you know what? It may be over your head for some people. So basically what it is, is I'm going short. Yeah, I'm bearish on the market and I'm making a bet that it's going to go down. Now, if I were to do a stock, okay, if I were to do a stock trade, that's really expensive, right? That would be, 
thousand dollars. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to put three hundred thirty-six thousand dollars in a trade. I used to do that when I traded stocks, but six years ago I switched over to options. It changed my life. I am so grateful uh, for the people that that taught and trained me how to do them. But I do them my own sort of way. Yeah, very different than other people. But here's the gist of it, okay? I bought to open the 328 puts and I sold to open the 327.50 puts for 13 cents and I put the expiration, I put the entire trade in there so traders can follow along. February 26th, so it had you know a week till expire, had a little bit of time and that was really my target. The best part about this, 13 cents, you guys, $13 a contract. So if I wanted to do 10 contracts, 130 bucks, to short the queues is much better than $336,000. I think we'd all agree on that. Right, so guess what we also had? We had a dark cloud cover, almost. Looks like it, but forget that, we had the big prints. So the next day, it went down significantly. Timing is everything when it comes to options. Really important, you master stocks before you go on to option trading. Most people do the opposite because they don't have a big account. They go, oh, well, I could trade options because it's cheap, right? And then they lose all that because they don't know how to trade. So really important, which is why I teach my traders how to trade stocks first. So the next day, I got out of half. I like to scale out of half to avoid exoditis. That's a bad disease that all of us have had. I scale and roll, which I'm gonna show you. Okay, so I got out 20 cents, you guys, that's 53% ROI. Amazing, I'll take it. So the next day, and I still had half, right? Guess what we got the next day? We went down a lot. Look at that volume that came in too. So I got out of last of my QQQ put debit spread 50 cents, you guys. We came all the way down to that 310 level and I got out right away. And then I rolled. So I got out at 50 cents. I made 100% ROI on my second half. And then I was like, well, what if it goes down more? I mean, we have all these dark pull prints coming in. We have another, we have another level. Look at that, 3 million, it's increasing. And then 6.5 million. So I want to be in this trade, but I don't want to risk 50 cents. I'm going to buy less contracts, okay, cheaper. So I got into this roll, rolled QQQ, put debit spread, buy to open 310 puts, sell to open 309 puts for 25 cents. And I gave myself, you know, same March, March 5th expiration. So two days later, and, and the best part about doing spreads is it's so much friendlier when it comes to time and expiration. Yeah, it's a Greek thing. I'm not gonna go into that right now, but they're amazing. So we, I wrote in my trading room that the queues were below a massive print level, which is bearish. And then I added to my QQQ put debit spread, 310, 309, March 5th, same one, right there. When we popped up, and you see we popped up to this eight exponential moving average on my daily chart. It's a brick wall of resistance. I'm always bearish when we go below it. And that timing is everything. So as soon as we popped up and hit that, that's when I added to my puts that I took profit on. And I wrote in the room that the SPY and the Qs at 1139 were below massive dark pool levels. And then I got out of half at the end of the day. Not bad for a day trade. I got out of half at 33 cents. I made 65% ROI on that. Right there at the end of the day at 346. And then we popped up again, you guys. Yeah, we popped up to the four EMA this time. Right there, I, I bought back those QQQ, put debit spread that I sold yesterday. And notice I'm, I'm always telling my traders what I'm doing because I want them to be able to do this themselves. And um, yep, I bought it back when we hit the four EMA in pink. It's another moving average I use. And by the way, it's in my book, Dark Pool Secrets. That book is free, by the way, darkpoolsecrets.com. All you have to do is pay for shipping. And I talk about this a lot in the book, is why I'm bringing that up. And then we came down, and then I got out of half at 35 cents. So again, I made 75% ROI. 
I mean, you just can't do this with stocks, making this kind of ROI. I think it was like my seventh or eighth roll. I bought back the 309, 310 puts March 5th. I'm still in those. Today, I bought, um, I bought different ones today. I was just gonna see if I can show you guys. Hold on, I think I closed out. Um, oh, I think I closed out the window. All right, today I bought back ones for, for next week. Um, 312s, 313s. So, you know, this is what I do all day. You know, I literally trade, teach, trade, teach, as um, I love it. And it's, it's so incredible because these traders give it back to me. They're call, I have a system in my room. I've, you know, I have uh, 600 traders in my room and um, I've trained them personally. And so, could you imagine training 600 people personally, how great your room, everybody's calling out things. They're calling out exactly what we're looking for. It's above the prints, it's, it's this level, it's hitting that, I'm getting out of it. They're calling out their trades. We work as a team. I, I have found so many trades every day because somebody called it out, I didn't see it. So it's really a, an awesome community, but it's an advanced room. Yeah, it's, you can't just start there. We have a, a great system where people start in my training pit. If you go to the darkpools.com and you go to services, you get this drop down menu. It's step one, the training pit. It, it's a beginner room, but it's more than a beginner room. It's definitely beginner intermediate. If you've been trading for a long time, but you're not familiar with the dark pools, yeah, you're gonna love the training pit. I teach there every Wednesday. Uh, but here's the deal. You get up, you, you go into the room at 6 o'clock Eastern. I am there and I'm mapping out these trades that you see right here in front of you. This is my uh, daily dark pool whisper. This is this morning's. I just put this in here as Julie was talking before me. And they're day trades. So I study the market. I study the pre-market activity and I actually map out the entire trade for you. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, you, we just call out in the Java pit, we call out when they go below the levels. Like somebody would call out Neo, bearish below, you know, 46. So we hit all our targets. All my targets have either pivots or moving averages there or particular levels, or I can see on the books where the big guys are buying and selling. So Neo hit all my targets. ZM hit all my targets today. CAN retraced the person's pivot, hit a couple targets, CCL hit a couple targets, SOS, Mara hit all of them on the downside, Riot hit all of them, RKT, did you guys see Rocket today? This was in my whisper. Bullish above 28.50, went to 43. Did anybody here trade this today? This was phenomenal. Great, you know what I used? Pre-market activity, it was on my hot list. FCX hit all of my targets. So not only do I map out just stocks, I personally like to trade the indexes for legal purposes. I'm not allowed to recommend a stock and trade it when I have thousands of people jumping into it. I'm not allowed to legally make money off of that. I have to wait 24 hours or I can trade an ETF, which is so much better. I mean, for me, I like it. I'm, I'm more of a swing trader. But here, oh, sorry about that. I do the SPY, the Russell, and the Qs. And I also do the futures. The E-minis, the NASDAQ futures, the oil futures, the gold futures, and Bitcoin futures. I've done extremely well on Bitcoin and Ethereum this year. We do use the dark pool. Yes, there, nobody knows about it, but there is dark pool on it. Um, but we have great instructors in our training pit. This is my team. They're characters. <laughs> they are. We, uh, they're such great people. We have Jane, we call her Airplane Jane. Some of you might know her. I know Anka knows her. Uh, Paul, the alien, he really looks like an alien. And I've, the best part is I've trained these. These were my students and um, I've trained them. And now they teach for me. And um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Jay, the trader, and Donda. And they teach a variety of subjects. I'm gonna kind of just show you quickly. This is our schedule for this month. So Paul did trend lines on Monday. Jay did think or swim, a final review. I have a boot camp class coming up tomorrow. I'm gonna to be doing 
bullish above, bearish below. I'm gonna teach you how I map out those trades I just showed you and how to trade them, which is great. Day trading the dark pool. Donda's gonna be doing step-by-step -step to go from paper to live trading. Paul's gonna be going over exoditis, enteritis, uh, mutual funds. Uh, we, we teach about Schwab software, how to set it up, how to set up Thinkorswim, Fidelity, Tastyworks, DOS, Trading View. Yeah, we cover like all of it. Jane's teaching IPO and floats. I'm going to be going over uh, swing trading, dark pool. Uh, Paul talks about computer hardware, backup. He's really uh, knowledgeable in that subject. Um, Jane, the importance of journaling trades on the 15th. Backup plans, risk management, uh, the DOS platform. I'm going to be teaching at the end of the month equity clock seasonality trades, how I combine all of that together. Jane's trading view at the end there. Um, basics of shorting the next month, just to kind of show you, he's gonna be talking the oil industry, patterns, recognition, repetition, options. Paul teaches options uh, part one, part two, part three. He'll be doing, yeah, we repeat it every couple months. You don't stay there forever, but it is, it's a great room to start and again I share my screen all day in there I answer questions and we send out the notifications of the dark pool in the alert tab not my trades the one thing I do not share in this room is my trades I'm not legally allowed to that's only my advanced trading room the Java pit so but this room we teach you how to set up your screen and I and I point you um, in the right direction I show you which dark pull prints are worth monitoring. Yeah, which ones are unusual. And I give you the levels, bullish above here, bearish below. You see me doing the whisper every morning, so you get that. And you hear me recording it live, and I always teach a lot. So you get you get so much, and it's, it's $99 a month. If you wanna join, check it out, try it out. We, we don't want you to come in and, and spend a lot of money and then realize, you know what, like this is not for me, I can't do this, because it's not for everybody trading, it's really not. But if you love it as much as I do, then you're gonna really appreciate it. Just go to thedarkpools.com, you can see all the services that I have there, I have apps, I have something for everybody. And um, let's see, Our, yes, the trading, the sessions are recorded. Uh, Borny, yep. Yes, if you cannot be there, a lot of people are working and just can't be there. We, we do them in the middle of the day because all of my instructors are traders. They're all trading in, in my trading room. So 11 o'clock, the things slow down. So we do all of our, our presentations live from 11 to about two o'clock. So you can be there for them, so you can ask questions or get the recordings. We keep them in the room drive. You just go in that night and they'll be there for you. You can download them or grab them, you know, Friday afternoon to watch over the weekend? That was a great question. Yeah. So HP is, what's the difference between this and level three? So level three, are you talking about the Java Pit trading room? The Java Pit trading room is where, yes. So that's where I trade live all day and teach while I'm trading. I do meetings all day and, and everybody follows along. Yeah, that's pretty much, the, you know, everybody's been trained. They've taken my boot camp class, which is 70 hours of live trading. Yeah, there's a lot I have to teach you. You know, it's a different system than, than anything out there. And I have specific rules. And, you know, I'm going to mentor you. I'm going to hold your hand through every single trade that you take. And, and that's, you know, in my room. I'm there every day. I'm there on the weekends. Yeah, a 24-7 almost. <laughs> I'm a little obsessed, but I, I love my traders. They're my family. I've been with many of them for, oh gosh, they're, they've been with me for over a decade. So we have a very close bond and, and you'll see, you know, it's, it's just an incredible community, but you have to approach this in the right order. You know, and what happened is this, we didn't always have this trading pit. People would come into my boot camp class and um, they, they would freak out. Oh my gosh, I don't have my software. I don't know what this is. What is that? What is the options? I don't know this. I don't know that. And it was, yeah, just a couple would, would freak out each time. But it was enough to make me say, hey, maybe we need something else. There's a gap. We're going from, yeah, right into advanced trading. And these traders are not set up. So we launched this um, 
about a year and a half ago, and it was the best thing we ever did because every time people are coming into my trading room, the Java pit, they've got everything squared away. They're good. Their software looks like mine. They have the dark pool. They have my moving averages. They have the pivots, and they know how to trade, and it's, it's great. So that's really what this is about. Okay, so the boot camp is, um, the boot camp is 70 hours of all live trading. I teach you my rules and we trade live every day, in and out. I'm instructing you how to get in, how to get out, get out of half, get out of a quarter, scale out, let's roll. It's, it's just all live, 70 hours of live trading. And we do day trading, do swing trading. We do um, option stocks. We, we focus on stocks first, so important. But I do get into options and I do get into futures and I do get into crypto. But we do focus on stocks. If you can trade stocks, you can trade anything in the world, in my opinion. So that's what it is. The boot camp is where I train you. And it's um, we start early in the morning and we end when the market closes. And we have one week on, one week off, and then one week on. And I only teach this class four times a year. And I'm actually teaching it next week. Yeah, March 8th. Yeah, so the next one after that is June 14th. So if you're going to join me now in the training pit, you're not going to be ready until June 14th, unless you're very advanced. You know, we, we do have a couple of people that sign up right before and they're okay, but I would suggest you take some time and really get the process right. You know, it's all about the process. I don't like to rush people into it. When you're ready, you know, you're ready. And if you don't like it, then hey, you gave it a whirl and, and you tried it out. So the hours are 6 a.m. Eastern till 11 and then 2 to 4. Uh, you don't have to get there that early if you don't want to. Again, it's recorded. But I want you to, I want to show you my process. I'm there. It's my time, 3 o'clock. So I, if I start my day at 3 o'clock, I want you to see exactly what I'm doing. How, why am I picking this stock for the whispers? How I'm mapping it out? And then when the bell comes, we trade them. So I want you to learn the whole process. So if I wake up at six o'clock in the morning Eastern and start my day, yep, I want you to also, if, if you can, you know, if you can't, that's okay too, All right? So great, excellent. Any more questions? Yep, I think we're done for the day, so I'm not cutting into anybody else's time. Um, but thank you, uh, thank you to Anka and David for uh, allowing me to come in. I'm, I hope you guys learned a couple things today. I have a YouTube channel with tons of videos, free videos. Um, yeah, you can spend all week learning from there as well. All right, have a great, have a great day, everybody. Time to go to the gym. Hey, Stephanie, thank you so much.